All right, this is our last theme of geography. We've done four so far, and this will make the fifth, completing your five themes of geography foldable. I'll tell you what times during the video to pause when I want you to write something down. Uh, right now, I want you to pause, and I want you to write human-environment interaction, okay? How do people and the environment shape one another? If you can't fit that whole question on the tab, that's okay. Mostly, I just want you to write human, environment, interaction. Okay, so go ahead and pause it. Write that down. Um, so, it answers the question, how the environment and the people who live there shape one another. This is our little stick figure man, and he could live in a place that has a lot of snow, a place that is an island um, that looks a little bit like a tomato, I just realized, but that's an island with a palm tree on it. Um, or you could live in a place near a forest where there's a lot of trees. And all those things shape the way that this person will live. So we're going to look at all the different ways exactly that it shapes that. Okay, so we have people adapt to the environment. That means they, they change something about themselves to fit the environment. Uh, you wear clothes to fit the weather. Uh, the shelters you build depend on what you're building the shelters to withstand. Uh, the transportation you use, the jobs you have, the foods you eat, the types of recreation. And recreation would be stuff you do in your free time. If you live by the ocean, your recreation will be very different than if you live in the mountains. Um, it just it depends on what environment you're in. So we have a house that's built on stilts in the water. We have an Eskimo who is dressing for the weather, boots, mittens, really heavy fur coat, and we have a bicycle for a place um, that has good enough weather to use a bicycle. You wouldn't use a bicycle in the snow. Okay? I want you right now to pause, and you need to pick four things of these to write down under people adapt to the environment. Okay? So on your foldable, open it up and write people adapt to the environment and four ways, four ways they adapt. Remember that you can use the top and the bottom. Okay, so go ahead and pause it. Four things. The next way that people interact with the environment is that they use the environment they have. Uh, they use it for the resources that are there, the food that's there, the shelter, um, that's available or, like we talked about, the shelter that they build, they would use supplies from the area. Also, clothing. You would, um, now that imports and exports are so common, you don't necessarily have to wear clothing made with resources in your area, but some people still do. Okay, so that's all ways that people use the environment. So we have a well for your water resource, uh, fish, if you live near a place that has fish, you could get your own fish. I'm aware that you can get uh, most foods in grocery stores, but I'm talking about food that's available in your physical environment. Uh, we also have a sheep here to represent wool. Some people will make clothing out of wool. A lot of things are made out of wool, so that's definitely a resource that people use. Here's some more ways that people use the environment. Uh, transportation. That would be, <clears throat> you'd use boats if you had water there that you could use to help you move from one place to another. Very cold areas have ice roads that they use uh, to transport things from one area to another. Your job depends, not always, but can depend on where you live. Um, you'd be a lumberjack if you live near a forest or a place that has uh, wood that, needs, that will be harvested and used. Fishermen obviously need to be a place that has water and fish. Uh, farmers. We have a lot of different kinds of farmers down here. Um, so your job depends on what environment you have and it's the way that you use the environment. We talked about recreation. You would do water sports if you were by an area that has water. You could do sledding or skiing, snowboarding if you're near that has snow. 
And if you're in an area that has um, hills or mountains or even just a good outdoor area, you can go hiking. Okay, well, that's another way you use the environment. Now this last one is not true for all cultures. It's not necessarily something that our culture does, but it is common for people to use their environment to harvest medicines or remedies that are available to them or fragrances that are in their environment that they use. So um, that's not something we see as often in America, um, well in our American culture, but it is common in some cultures. Okay, now you need to pause the video again. You need to go between the last slide I had up, which said ways people use the environment, and this one is more. And again, you need to pick four things. Okay? So you need to have you need to have the ways people use the environment. You need to pick four things. You can rewind and look at what you need to have. Okay? Blue title on the last slide. Four things. resources you um, actually yes I do want this on your foldable so go ahead and pause it again and you just need to have the definitions for a renewable resource and a non-renewable resource you can write them in your own words that's okay but you do need to know what they each mean okay a renewable resource is a natural resource that can be replaced or used again Okay, so I have solar power, and this is wind, wind power, and those can be used again and again and again. Um, wood or timber would be another renewable resource because we can replace it, and we can plant uh, trees for every tree we cut down. So those resources can be replaced, these ones can be used again. A non-renewable resource is a natural resource that has a limited supply, and once it's gone, it's gone. It cannot be replaced. It cannot be renewed, okay, hence non-renewable resource. Make sure you have those words and their definitions on your foldable. Okay, um, the last way that humans interact with their environment is by changing the environment around them to suit their needs. Uh, you change the environment when you hunt or fish. You're taking animals out of the environment that are naturally there. War has a huge effect on the environment. Um, a canal is a man-made passageway through a really thin strip of land um, so boats can get through and that definitely changes the environment. Building cities, the map we looked at um, the other day with the human footprint that's what, we're, that's what I was talking about, was changing the environment, okay? So building a city has a huge effect on the environment. It changes, it changes a lot about what it used to be like. Moving different species from place to place. Uh, sometimes it happens on purpose, and sometimes it happens on accident when people, um, if you go boating in one area and then animals uh, attach to the bottom of your boat, and then you take your boat home, You've moved a species from this area to this area, and that changes the environment. Pollution changes the environment, we know that. A dam would stop a river, and that definitely changes a lot about the environment right there, as well as farther down the river. And the last one here is cutting down trees. You need to pause. You need to write people change the environment, okay? And you need to have five from this one. You need to pick five things and write down five ways that people change the environment. Okay? If you've missed something, you need to rewind and find it again, but you need four ways that people um, adopt, adapt to the environment. You need four ways that people use the environment. You need five ways that people change the environment. You also need the definitions of renewable and non-renewable resources. If you have those things, you're good. If not, rewind, get everything you need. I'll see you in class.